Right, so we're here now in Ubon Ratatani and we've come to this remote little island called Red Ant Island because Mark has just bought a new drone, a, a DJI Air 3 and we're just looking for somewhere quiet where we can test it out and uh, we were looking on the map and we thought, well, you know, we probably can't do much damage on this remote little island. So we're going to find a nice quiet little spot and test the drone out. Right, this is it. This is the absolutely inaugural flight we haven't even started we didn't even start this up indoors this is it this is the first time this thing has moved fingers crossed oh yes you've got press and hold it isn't it? So, check which way the button is it's the one up Remember to start the cool yeah, It's lovely, isn't it? Look at that. Mm. Look at the quality. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing that struck me was the picture quality on the built-in screen on the remote controller. Mark had bought the Fly More kit, which came with the new RC2 remote controller. Now, previously, I'd been used to just using my mobile phone as the remote screen, and I just couldn't believe the difference in the pitch quality. It was so much better. Now, at this time, a lot of Ubon Ratatani province was flooded, which really became apparent in the pictures we were getting back from the drone. Uh, I just pointed the drone over the paddy fields and kept flying, and, uh, and the next thing I knew, it was four and a half kilometers away, which totally blew me away. I mean, that is a fantastic range. That was just straight out of the box. Admittedly, it wasn't an area with a lot of kind of Wi-Fi interference, but I was so impressed. Another surprise to me was the new automated landing function where the drone would automatically pick the best landing trajectory as opposed to the old system where it would maintain its altitude until it got right above you before descending. Well, so far, totally impressed for a first flight. That was absolutely brilliant. Incredible bit of technology. It's, you know, the, the drone I normally use is about six, seven years old and uh, technology has moved on so much. What you do, take clip for coming down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can make money. <laughs> I can make money. <laughs> so we just dropped somebody off at the Lao border and we were looking for somewhere where we could sort of play around with the drone a bit and someone told us off about this place quite near called uh Wat Silin Dor Walalam Puprao which uh is only a few kilometres from the border and the view from here looks beautiful. This place is incredible and because it's up a hill it's got this lovely cool breeze you know as soon as you get out of the sun lovely
And that's one thing I absolutely love about Thailand. You're just going about your day and then somebody gives you a little tip off about a place that's just a few minutes away and, and you follow up on their tip and the place is absolutely incredible. I mean, there's just no way I would have found this place Bucks. otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this incredible furniture here, you know, just, uh, just carved out of tree stumps, you know, off cuts. <laughs> Now, of course, once we got there, we couldn't wait to test out Mark's DJI Air 3 drone again. And uh, I put it up and then did a quick flyover from the temple. And then I decided to head back over the temple towards the Mekong River, which of course is the border between Thailand and Laos. Now, although it didn't look that far, it turned out that the, uh, the river was actually a good four kilometers away but the drone just out up the distance just so smoothly. I was just totally impressed once again. Now, for those of you who are technically minded, I set the drone's video recording to HLG mode. Uh, the main reason for that is that all my other footage I shoot on my iPhone, which also uses HLG, which is like a high dynamic range format that operates in the BT 2020 color space so it just made my after editing a lot easier. Now another thing that really impressed me was just how well the drone held its course. I mean when I headed back to the temple from the Mekong River which was four kilometers away I just aimed it at the temple and kept going in a straight line and it just followed that line perfectly you know which is is really a hard thing to do from that kind of distance and finally i decided to try out some of the drones automated trick shots where you just position the drone, set the angle, and let the drone do its thing. And it pulls the kind of maneuvers that you couldn't hope to reproduce manually. Uh, in conclusion, I was just totally impressed by the drone. It blew me away. I want one. Right, we... <coughs> Right, we're just driving now from Uban Ratatani, heading towards Mugdahan. And I just saw this sign, uh, I, you can see it behind me, it says uh, Mung Samsip. Now this was the first place I ever visited in Isan. You know, I used to have a girlfriend called Poi. And I just remember one of the visits I made to Thailand, I saw we were up in Chiang Mai, and she talked me into coming back and meeting the family. Of course, I didn't realize it was a 14 hour bus ride from Chiang Mai. <laughs> And uh, I can't remember much. All I remember is all this weren't here. It was just all paddy fields and actually it looked beautiful. And I just remember the first night being there. In the M days, there were no Farangs lived in Isan. So I was just totally isolated in the middle of nowhere. And I just remember her, her saying to me, uh, what did I want to eat? And I was just starting to learn Thai back then. And I, I said, you know, Kalpak guy, you know, chicken fried rice. And then I remember her, her little sister, turned up with two live chickens upside down, one in each hand, and they said, which one do you want? And I had to choose which one. <laughs> I ate that evening, you know, but uh, yeah, this is actually the first time I've been back to Moon Samsip since 1989.